Yo. 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 How's everybody doing today? Welcome to Mixed and Misidentified 5. And we've done this five times online already. It's funny because there's a ton of different mixies out there. I'm telling you, we've got a new type of mixie on here. I even got, um, I've learned more about my tribal indigenous people in Canada this afternoon. Um, I've had to teach somebody how to say Spokane today. Um, (laughs) I wasn't expecting that. The best part is it wasn't a white person for once. So, hey, white people, you're off the hook this time. You're not like, hey, Duante, what is it, Spoken? Am I going to Spoken next week? She's going to be pissed. I'm pretty sure she's going to be like, you're heckling me. Eh, not really. I'm just giving her a hard time. I got to start the show somehow. Plus, this is a great way for me to uh, be able to get the show started. I talk for a couple of minutes, ramble. That way I can kind of get everybody in here, share it a couple of places, and make sure we're going. But it's mixed and misidentified. I love this show because everybody on the flyer usually looks like a couple of us could be cousins. You fuckers can unmute now and laugh at me. That'd be fucking great. There's only seven of us in this fucking room. (laughs) I can tell they've all been beat as kids. They're like, you told us to hit mute and I'm sitting in the corner. Fuck you, dad. You told me I was on timeout. Angelo's like, I don't want you to throw a chocolate at me. I know how this works, right? (laughs) <laughs> Joel's Puerto Rican he's had some chocolates thrown at him I'm sure you know what I'm saying the there, you go. there you go there you go right but it's funny to me um I don't know I'm I'm, I'm mixed you know I'm uh 60% white it said 39% African American and then I was 1% indigenous now that pissed me off because like everybody told me my great grandma's full Indian and I can do fucking math. You know what I mean? That means I should be 12 and a half percent. You know what I'm saying? At least, you know what I mean? Like that should be, you know, six and a quarter to 12 and a half percent. But that's not that's not how the math worked. I think that's a uh, think they lied. You know what I mean? Black people lie about that shit. We get a little silkiness to our hair. and We're like, yeah, I'm part Cherokee. <laughs> <laughs> There's too much truth to that joke. But I actually tell some jokes. For me, being mixed is weird because I have people come up to me all the time and they mistake my culture and shit. And I had a lady come up to me last week and she goes like, aren't you one of those Samoas? (laughs) And I was like, no, ma'am. I'm not a Girl Scout cookie. Yeah, and if I was a cultural cookie, I'm an Oreo bitch. Get it right, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Probably double stuff thanks to COVID. You didn't hear that from me, though, right? (laughs) But it's even funnier because the worst part about being mixed for me is I'm not only going bald and white and gray. um, I'm actually going, like, blonde, orange, and red, too. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I'm turning into a calico cat and shit. You know what I mean? Like, this (laughs) This ain't cool. And for you science guys, I don't have a vagina. So this is that don't work either. You know what I mean? <laughs> for those who don't know, 99% of calico cats are women. I didn't or female. I didn't know. I don't sorry. I told my <laughs> cougar joke one day. And I was like, I call East Indian women Bengal tigers. And they're like, that's that's racist. I said, No, I call Asian women snow leopards. And they're like, that's racist too. And I was like, no, that's just a good fucking science joke. It's regional. Like I'm just, I'm naming where they're from. I'm not doing anything racist. I promise you, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's weird. Like I'm being mixed. Like I, I've been called both racial slurs. Yeah. Uh, first one was the N-word. Yeah, it was by my mom at a barbecue. And I just looked at her and was like, who brought this white woman? You know what I mean? <laughs> She's probably the one who put the grapes in the potato salad, too. I'm pretty sure. Get her ass out of here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the funnier one for me was when I got called cracker because I didn't know what to do. I looked around and I was like, I didn't bring any saltines or ribs. I got no cheese, no peanut butter. I don't see no cracker. What are you talking about? Oh, sorry. Did I hit some nerves? <laughs> There's going to be some white people on there fucking pissed. Did he just say cracker? And the one that kills me is when I say nigga on stage, sometimes afterwards I got to show a picture of my dad so everybody knows it's fucking okay. (laughs) (laughs) 
that's some fucked up shit. I remember I was in Boise and I was like, I grew up poor white trash. And they looked at me, I was like, I'm an 80s mix baby. My dad didn't raise me. What do you think? I raised yeah. <laughs> Oh shit, this is getting a little too real. I know I'm hurting some feelings. <laughs> but I think the worst part about being mixed is having racist grandparents. Oh shit. Yeah. She said, oh shit. Yeah, like it's not my fault grandma's racist. I mean, she was born in the 50s in South Dakota. It's kind of like the norm, you know what I mean? But it was the little things that she did to let me know. Because I had this uh, Hispanic girl over for Easter one year, right? And she looks at me and we finished eating and she looks over at my date and was like, uh, I want to ask her a question. I was like, oh, fuck. You know what I mean? When old people ask if they can ask a question, it's not going to be appropriate. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so she looks at her and goes, uh, you want any coffee? And she declines. And she goes, why is not all you people like coffee? And I go, grandma, she's not Colombian. She's Mexican. She goes, I can't tell the difference. <laughs> And then my dad gets smart and goes, what are you going to do? Offer me some grape drinks? She goes, no, I don't have any, but I got some watermelon if you want it. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. And she oh. looked me dead in the face, to, you know, because she's kind of indignant and pissed off. And she was like, guess what? She was Asian. I wouldn't even offer her coffee. I'd offer her tea. I was like, fuck, Grandma. I know Jesus died for your sins on this day, but you're not allowed to just do a ta-da on racism. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I think I got the show started. Are you guys ready to get this show on the road? Are you guys yeah. having a good time? <laughs> There's a couple comics here who haven't heard me, and they're like, oh, fuck, he went in. Yeah. <laughs> I set the bar. There's a line you can cross. As long as you're part of the group, you can say their slur. If you're not part of the group, I mean, even white comics should know that. You can say cracker. That's it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Even more indignant is when I say cracker to white people and they get mad and I go, my mom's as white as yours. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, our first comedian, he's one race, but it's an island that's been kind of turned into like a little breeding area of a couple of different ones from what he said. Like Puerto Ricans, they're not all just one race. He said they're black, they're native, they're Caribbean, there's some white settlers in there, right? They got a little bit of everything and their food's the same way, kind of unique, right? Joel's unique too. We'll see how this goes. Uh, give it up from all the way out of Spanaway, Washington. Give it up for Joel Aviles! <laughs> they call me Big Money because I'm broke and opposites attract. <laughs> Rican, which means I'm mixed. Originally indigenous Caribbean, known as Taino. And they were the first known to discover Christopher Columbus lost at sea because he's a shit navigator. <laughs> we're out on a canoe and they approached his ship. And Columbus is out there waving them down. My people were just looking at him like, who's this white guy think he is coming up on us like that, huh? <laughs> Started flashing his shiny pots and pans to get their attention like a creepy pedophile in a white van luring children with candy. <laughs> The famous sign spinner in Puyallup says, spin the sign, trying to get to a certified puppy, drops it. <laughs> or okay. don't let you get your attention. We're trying to reach you for extended car's warranty. And so he finally got one of the two men to do a fun, a friendly little dance to greet them. Make it a little love, do a little dance, get down tonight. <laughs> and my people must have thought it was a shitty dance because they heckled him with bow and arrow. Where <laughs> Columbus was still able to make land and sink one of his ships at the same time. He was able to talk it out with the locals, make some trade, and they shook hands giving him syphilis and the rest of Europe. Oh, <laughs> so he turned back to Europe and came back with some more of his lazy friends who also brought Africans. <laughs> <laughs> when he actually got it right this time and landed in the first island he reached by boat, Puerto Rico, where he started colonizing 
and learned that he was not able to strike the dino on the head of the swords because the swords will just break. <laughs> <laughs> So this pretty much makes me a mix of mostly white, black, and native. And the white is just for looks. It's, it's so <laughs> 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 yeah. I, should, I should get a hood pass. And you know I leave without mentioning reparations. <laughs> Nobody has said, hey, that's a Puerto Rican right there. Not even Puerto Ricans. And so until I met this one guy, I was selling weed back when weed was illegal, big deal. And I was meeting up for the first time. And he was like, hey, you the man, Joel? Oh, you're Puerto Rican. And I'm like, what? What the fuck? I didn't even ask you yet. What are you, a witch or something? <laughs> <laughs> this is Jewish, that uh, he was able to see the skull. Uh, <laughs> of Columbia. Uh, Colombian and Cuban, all they had was Puerto Rican. And so <laughs> I was so amazed. I told them, here, this bag is on the house. Thank you very much for your time. Give it up Woo! for Joel, everybody. Jesus. It's funny. I'm, <laughs> I don't think that motherfucker can spell reparations. I'm pretty sure that's why Puerto Ricans don't talk about them. You know what I mean? Like, you got to be able to spell it to get it. You got to be able to write it on the sign. And he can't, oh, they can't write that shit on the sign. You can't fly, pull by Puerto Rico and see a sign for reparations if you can't spell it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that too. Fuck all you guys. I, I'm black, white, Native American. I'm fucking Puerto Rican too. Shit. From what he just said, what the hell? Am I fucking wrong here? He said, well, I'm basically black, white, and indigenous. You're fucking, I'm Puerto Rican. Yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. Too bad Sweden and Norway didn't conquer shit. I know that. I'm fifth generation of even Swedish. That shit sucked. But it's weird, you know, because like I told you guys, uh, uh, I found out I was 60% white, right? And it was fucking with me. So I tried to go to one of their meetings, right? And they wouldn't let me in. And I had a cape on and everything. I had my whole hood. I was like, how'd you guys know? You know what I mean? There's a guy at the door talking about there's no teens, Wayne, you idiot. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, oh, shit, I, I wore my mask and my hood. How'd you guys? Oh, <laughs> Guess it was my accent. The way I said nigga with an A instead of an R. They're like, that's one of them. He didn't say the R, hard R when he walked in here and he said he hates all niggas. Yeah, he's black. Get him out of here. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Best part is, is Angelo has never seen me live really or go off. He just seen my scripted shit. He's just over there fucking dying. But anyway, <laughs> our next comedian, I think she likes me now. She's ready to beat my ass when the show started. She's like, you're one of those white <laughs> people. I know. <laughs> well, let's see. No, like I've got Native American friends I go to every 4th of July. She's like, oh, you're going to tell me you have a Native American friend too? Fuck, yes, I am. I got like five of them. I know them by name. I go see them once a year. Keeps me good at the powwows. You know what I mean? Fuck. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a powwow. That's how you fucking know. Not a barbecue, a powwow. White people say picnic, right? Black people say barbecue. Indigenous say powwow. Same fucking thing, right? <laughs> Anyways. I hope she's I hope she's not too mad at me. I'd love to work with her again. She seems fun. She's got an attitude. I love the sass. Fuck yeah. You don't know what the fuck I am. Tell me, right? <laughs> Best part she is, she was like, I put oh, I noticed she put on some lipstick since we talked. She's like, oh fuck, I was gonna do some makeup. I didn't know I might actually get seen on this fucking thing. Not this some guy jacking off in the closet doing a comedy show. Yeah, it's not, I promise you. Jacking off at my desk. Okay. Anyways. Our next comedian, I think she's going to be great. She's going to fit in great. Uh, she she's, comes by a referral of another comedian I love from the same area out of Ottawa, Canada. What's that, Abu? Oh. Give it up for Janelle Naya! What's up? <laughs> what are you motherfuckers doing tonight? Hi, my name is Janelle Niles. 
Thank you, Brown Seth Rogan. I am so happy to be here tonight. <laughs> Let's get, oh, and thanks to all my, uh, my community who came in to watch this tonight and everybody in Ottawa who came in to watch us tonight. Please hit up that chat. I want to see that you're here. That's awesome. All right, so let's get this out of the way. Let's get this out of the way. You're like, what is she? Which is rude, but like you should be asking, how is she? All right, how is she? <laughs> or who is she? Who is she? Okay, but you know, I'll just tell you, I'm half black, half native. My mom's black, my dad's native, and I'm a twin. So she's black and I'm native. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, but no, in all real, like my mom, she's Martin Lawrence and my dad's Pocahontas. <laughs> and he, he hates it. He hates it when I call him that. He got so mad one day, he just up and left and never came back. <laughs> I think he went to go like sleep with some pilgrims or something. Right? <laughs> but oh never, tr never trust a native man when he's saying going out for a pouch of tobacco. That's all I'm saying. So we got any uh, biracials in here? Any biracials? Any quad racials? Any triple dip vanilla swirl chocolate cones? Just <laughs> yeah. behold the new world order. Me! <laughs> the future me! Mix. Yeah. Mix. Doesn't it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes. Yep, you know, yep, yep. Yep. When I was born, the creator, he blessed me with a spirit name something else but no it was first rays of the sun woman very fancy eh? very long normally we get spirit names that are fish boy or bear with me i actually knew a guy named bear ass <laughs> i had a family member she's like come come see us little bear ass look at little bear ass give little bear ass a kiss Give a little bit. He's your cousin. <laughs> oh, my spirit name. Let me go back to my spirit name. First rays of the sun woman. I, I think he called me that because every morning I go outside and I sing my traditional indigenous morning song. <laughs> Those are not the words. Those are not the words. Don't come at me, Lion King. Okay. I mentioned I'm native in my act. I do. And some people say I'm way too political. Like I make white men feel uncomfortable. But you guys started it. You guys started it. <laughs> like I'm half black and half native. I was born political. Sorry, I'm trying to channel Paul Mooney when I say that. I was born political. <laughs> when, my mom, when my mom found out I was native, she's like, ho, 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 this is going to piss some people off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but don't worry, don't worry. White guilt was so 2019. It was, uh, it's out of style. It's, uh, and <laughs> what I tell these uh, white male comedians that are many, if you have a problem with me, May the wagons I burn light my motherfucking way. <laughs> I'm just going to snap there. Yeah. <laughs> Some say I'm too preachy. Some say I'm too preachy. <coughs> well, I got to let you know, I was raised Baptist, and we say our words with conviction. Like, how am I supposed to get my point across without a little bit of flavor, without a little bit of seasoning? <laughs> I'm sorry, white people, you don't know what that is. <laughs> but just imagine ketchup, but with more attitude. Oh. <laughs> well, steal my land and call me Rebecca. We're having a great show, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> now, you might be asking, why does she sound black now? She sound made know she sound black. <laughs> It's because I'm too spirited and I don't know which spirit is coming through me. It's usually one of the two. It's usually one of the two. One is usually telling me to be a proud, black, strong, indigenous woman. And the other one's telling me to burn this place to the motherfucking ground. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm swearing so much. I forgot. Are we allowed to swear on the show? <laughs> it's late enough over here on the, on the, on the east side of Canada. We can't hear you, Dante. 
That's all good. I'm going to keep cussing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we know how to edit over here. We're okay, professionals. Sweet, it's sweet. all right. You're good. <laughs> Two spirited. I mentioned that, but what two spirited means to me is when I'm with a female presenting person, I'm quite masculine. But when I'm with a man, I'm quite masculine. Oh, <laughs> I've been told I exhibit mad top energy. <laughs> Whatever that means, I don't. <laughs> Like I've been told it could be a real pain in the ass. If I struck a chord with anybody here, that's proof <laughs> to be a bad indigenous person. I proof I might be a bad indigenous person. Like if if assimilation did not work, you can just give the lamb back. No harm, no foul. Like mm. just, just don't tell the queen. Just don't tell the queen. Oh. It's not like uh, you guys don't know how to pull out. You just left Afghanistan. Sorry. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Sorry, jokes. <laughs> what, 20 years? What's 500? Come on. Oh, <laughs> They're waiting for you oh, back gosh. home. They're waiting. <laughs> Speaking of which, any landowners here? Any landowners? Um... Any single landowners? <laughs> Just trying to get my land back one white man at a time. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, shit. No politicians, uh... though. No politicians, because all you want to do is lay pipe. <laughs> what in the what's who what ten is up with that <laughs> <laughs> hey if you don't want this poom poom you can go smudge yourself that's all i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> this poom poom is sacred oh my god <laughs> i got about three minutes left so i'll just keep on going do you know what grinds my sage mm. <laughs> you know what grinds my sage when I get asked a bunch of dumb questions about my ethnicity, but normally about my status card up here in Canada, we got a card that proves I'm a person. And I hear I'll clear up some misconceptions. Yes, I do get free education as long as I keep a GPA over 3.2. And yes, <laughs> I do pay taxes, but just a small one, just a small one. Don't tell Trudeau, Don. <laughs> <laughs> But the no best problem. part is, <laughs> but the best part is of having a status card, I get to hunt and fish wherever I want. So I was in Loblaws the other day and I dropped my land in the fish tank. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm a security guard by profession. So I walked myself out. I just like, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I let you guys know I'm half black, half native, but. I always get asked, oh, what tribe are you from? What clan? No one ever asks me what ethnicity of black I am. Slave. <laughs> <laughs> Slave black. I guess we didn't know growing up what type of black we were. What my moms did was date every type of black man there was oh, to usurp their culture. <laughs> oh. Much like the Kardashians. <laughs> so she brings a Haitian man home and he gives us something in the baby mama project we've never had before food <laughs> one second <laughs> and he treated my mom with the utmost respect so she dumped him <laughs> then she started dating some Jamaican man and do you guys know who Miss Cleo is? Miss Cleo, the yeah. Jamaican Jamaican. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's what my mom would turn into. I'd come home from school. She'd be like, get your bum cloud ass up them stairs and get your homework done, man. And her boyfriend <laughs> would be standing right beside her. I don't talk like that. <laughs> Why are you so rude to your children? <laughs> now she's dating some white guy with like Nazi tattoos. I'm like, pick a lane. <laughs> Pick a lane. <laughs> oh goodness gracious i'm gonna end on this one <sighs> there's so many conspiracy theories that happen during rona and it's just driving me crazy like lizard people in the highest forms of power turning frogs gay like rest in peace alex <laughs> jones career you know what i'm saying <laughs> vaccinations are causing artistic expression yeah <sighs> but the only conspiracy theory i can get behind the only one that makes sense to me is that the Virgin Islands were only named as such by a large donation from the Jeffrey Epstein Corporation. Oh my god! <laughs> Thank you. My name is Janelle oh Lyles. God. Have a good night. Oh my god! <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Fuck! God damn it!
I feel like I just got touched as a little kid right there. Like you gotta get consent. Are you sure you're not white? You just raped my ears. <laughs> and I just want to let you know, Janelle's a keeper because I know how this works. She's got all her teeth, and for men, women, that's that's a good sign. <laughs> I I know I got Alaskan Native friends. She got all her teeth. You marry her. That's that's good hunting. And then another guy said, well, she doesn't. That's a keeper, too. I was like, oh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah. so you heard what I said there. Janelle's like, that wasn't funny, you asshole, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Oh, my God. I'm still mad we got heckled like fucking Americans made Canada. Talk to the fucking <laughs> French. She's like, you people. You, we're not pulling out of your territory. Those are the fucking Canadians. You fuckers don't even go to war. What do you mean? You don't know how to pull out. You can't even pull out to get to the war. Fuck you. Shit. <laughs> That's my 60% white side coming up. My apologies. <laughs> Sorry, I, I couldn't help it. I apologize. Anyways, a great set. Give it up for uh, Janelle Niles. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Woo! 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 Make sure I say this right. It's a uh, Mac. Oh shit! Fuck it. Thank you. Uh, it's Mick Mac. Mick Mac tribe. I know that shit's important. I got cussed out earlier. <laughs> Best part is that she went off on my white side like a motherfucker. You made a whole poster with the wrong flag on it. I, was, I didn't even make the fucking poster, but all right, yeah, I'm sorry. And then the best part is, you know who makes my poster? They are a, a you know what I mean? They, and I mean they, are two-spirited just like you, you son of a bitch. And I knew what she meant by two-spirited. All you white people was like, yeah, she's half an old. That means something different to the indigenous people. Donda <laughs> muted herself. She's over here peeing on her pants. I know she's laughing. Anyways, let's get this motherfucker going. Uh, this next guy, he said he's a Filipino American. What it is is his parents don't find him all Filipino anymore because he was raised here. That's what it is. I know that's what it is because he's done changed. He's broken <laughs> rules. He doesn't mix up his P's and F's. I'm pretty sure he gets those right now, right? No. And he's also a local <laughs> comedian in our area. You know what I'm saying? I know his dad's Americanized because he was watching the fucking football game, not Manny Pacquiao's <laughs> basketball league. You know what I mean? Like I know how this works. <laughs> <laughs> This next comedian is regular at Nate Jackson's Comedy Club doing open mics. He's up and coming. I know he's working his ass off. All the way out of DuPont, Washington. And for all you fuck faces who don't know, basically Tacoma, which is the other border <laughs> to Seattle. <laughs> We're gonna hear a lot of Washington cities. Basically say Seattle, you fuck tarts. And not Spokane for Janelle. Not Spokane for Janelle. Anyways, our next comedian, give it up for Angelo Lazarte! How's it going, everybody? How's it going, everybody? You know, I was about to say, Janelle has that big dick energy about her. I, like, I felt like she was about to peg me for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, if that's what reparations are going to be like, well, shit. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure he, I'm pretty sure our host, Dante, like, nailed the head, the head. But sometimes I do mix up my piece with my F. Especially when it comes to Filipino, becoming a Filipino American, uh, I definitely felt like a, I was an American when I went into the Philippines. Because by the time I was going into a barber shop, like really, I was going into a barber shop trying to get a haircut, right? And then the barber's like, "Yo, are you Chinese?" And I was like, "What the fuck? I'm not. <laughs> the, I might have like these slanted eye con conflections, but goddamn, I'm not Chinese. I'm American. What the fuck? Just give me my haircut." Turns out it was more than just a haircut. My parents paid for um, my parents paid for a haircut, a massage, a close shave, and my boss to be waxed. I don't know what, how the fuck that happened. I, I didn't feel great about it <laughs> until I realized I might have mixed up my uh, massages for like someone else. I don't know. I had two massages back then, back there. It felt fucking weird. <laughs> weird. I think it was, I think one of them was like a happy ending. I don't know. <laughs> I just blasted out, out of that shit. All right. Let's see here. Uh, let's, I'm going to tell you this right now, man. I mean, being raised in an Asian household, you, you get treated like, I don't know, how, how would I say this? My parents were asking me questions to push me into like the medical field, right? Do you want to be a doctor or, you know, even the stereotypical, do you want to be a nurse type of deal? 
And I'm just like, no. And then I realized, oh, no, my parents were not treating me like their son, right? They're treating me and my siblings like the New York Stock Exchange. My youngest daughter wants, the youngest daughter wants to be a doctor. The middle son wants to be in, in IT security. Me, on the other hand, they look at me like, you're going for some useless fucking art degree. What the fuck is this horse shit? <laughs> what the fuck is this horse shit? Because instead of market manipulation, they were doing occupation speculation. That's all that we were fucking doing. That was all that they were fucking doing. <laughs> um, that, uh, um, basically, they look at me like, like some sort of fucking bet. Like some sort of chump bet on me. <laughs> some sort of chump fucking bet on me. <laughs> all right let's get back to it here um uh we filipinos name like we we name foods weird like i don't know about this view but we name like this rice cake called a puto Yo. <laughs> <laughs> and i don't know about you but i think it must have been something by the time it might have felt it might have been like this response when the japanese occupied the philippines and we looked at them like they treated us like shit. And we looked at the rice cakes they left on the ground. We were like, all right, we know what to name these motherfuckers. These, these fucking putos right here. These <laughs> are fucking putos. And then for some reason, we had American, we had like yellow cheese on top of it. And then it looks like some future president. Like, it's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> That's just it. <laughs> Okay, I don't know about you guys, but this has been happening in the local, like in the old local area in Washington State. But the public school system now identifies Asians as white people. Now I don't know about you, but I felt very fucking weird about that because now I realize now, like I'm sitting here thinking, wait, I had pri privilege the whole time. You're telling me I could have cared out, out caring the fuck out of some people, and they would have looked fucking <laughs> weird about this shit. I was like. What the yeah? I wouldn't feel I wouldn't feel guilty about going into a Starbucks anymore because now I'm sitting here thinking I can finally drink this white fucking chocolate mocha without everyone looking at me like I was like I'm some sort of whitewashed motherfucker. <laughs> That's what <laughs> um I would have just I don't know about you guys, but I would have been like shit, fuck this. Like go fuck yourself. Put on it, huh? I have white privilege because the school system tells me that I need to do this shit. I have this fucking white privilege. Give me that fucking set of boots and whatnot. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna end it on this note because I'm pretty sure as someone you no one realizes this, but I don't think you see anybody Asian going to therapy. Because <laughs> if you see like an Asian person going to therapy, deep down you know that person's mentally broken. <laughs> <laughs> that person is mentally fucking broken. Him and him or her, his family is fucking gone. They're not going to support that person whatsoever. I think I have like what, what thirty seconds. I think I'm good to go. Thank you guys so much, everybody. My name is Angelo Lazar. Okay, everybody. Woo! Woo! I'm so happy it was like I think I've got 30 seconds and I'm like no bitch you didn't look at the light I was about to we were about to be dating like on love connection you know what I mean we'd have had that double screen that's what zooms like it's like love connection some of you guys are too too young to remember Don's over there laughing she's she's experienced like me she remembers to be back in two and two oh god it's funny as hell I don't it, it's funny to me because when we talk about mixed people and like being white or Asian. I loved it because I had a Spanish guy come up to me. He's like, yeah, I'm not white. I'm Spanish. <laughs> you mean you're from Europe, right? That's fucking, that's white people, right? Like, that's not, <laughs> just because you guys enslaved the Mexicans and, and the Aztecs and then you made them Mexicans, you made them speak their language. That don't give you no minority status. <laughs> These guys are still colonizers. That's white people. Portuguese people too. You're fucking white too. Stop trying to act like you're a minority. Sorry, that's my bit for this. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my that's my fucking hot take. Portuguese and Spanish people are fucking white. You're not minorities. You're European. Go to hell. Fuck it. <laughs> I'll die on that mountain. I don't give a shit. I'll die on it. That, 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 that's. If that's the one thing that finally got me fucking canceled, fuck it. I'll die on it. Anyway. 
it's funny for me. Uh, it's 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 awesome to do these shows because a lot of people um, don't know how. I actually know the map real well. So I remember we had somebody who uh, was from Burma and they were Burmese. And I was like, there's a fucking, or Maltese. And I was like, Malta, you mean you're fucking Italian? And they're like, you know what Maltese is? Yeah, it's fucking it's Italy. It's island right next to it. What do you mean? You're, you're fucking Italian or Sicilian. You guys are all the same shit, right? And then like with uh, Umi, I had no fucking clue what she was. I was like, mm, I'm not even guessing. She got like 17 fucking things. Then it's really only two. And the funny part is Lebanon and India are real close to each other too. So if you know your history, they used to be the kind of same people too. Shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> Genghis ruled all you fuckers at one point. I'm just saying. No oh, shit. We're doing history jokes now. That's how much of a nerd I am. <laughs> this next comedian hails out of one of the most suicidal cities ever. She used to be from Aberdeen. That's some sad shit. Then she moved to Hawaii, and for some reason, now she's in the meth capital of the world, Portland slash Vancouver. <laughs> we can tell her life's a fucking roller coaster. Comedy's gonna be similar to him, sir. I love her anyways. Like I said, she's East Indian and Lebanese, and it's not East Indian. You fuckers are the only Indians. We're not Indians. We're indigenous. I'm just fucking with you. Anyways, <laughs> give it up. Oh, we out of Vancouver, Washington tonight. Umi. Ah! What's up? Oh my gosh, I love all this energy. Thank you. Thank you. Jeez, Louise. I am bisexual, I am biracial, and I go to therapy mm. bi-weekly. Woo! Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Angelo. You're right. I am totally fucked in the head. <laughs> it's very true. I've been in therapy for a long time. I think we're gonna make this just I'm gonna get married to it. Oh, <laughs> I'd say that I'm a pretty decent driver because I only hit parked cars. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did learn how to drive from my mother and she often let Jesus take the wheel or Buddha a la Krishna. She's not picky. <laughs> <laughs> When people ask me, what are you? I let them know. I'm like, you know what? I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> That's all we need to know. <laughs> oh, my heritage, my heritage, my heritage. I am Leonin. I have no magic. Any Dungeons and Dragons lovers? There's always one. Don't lie. <laughs> Oh, my parents, my parents. Okay, okay. They're, I'm a lesbian, I'm Lebanese, and I'm Indian. Oh, my goodness. Dante with your history jokes. <laughs> oh, shit. You know, it took me 30 years to stop saying dot, not feather. 30 years since I was a child. I was like, this is how I'm explaining this to people. It's like, oh, no, there's non bread, not fry bread. Like, there's so much there. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, people who do hair, they usually know I'm Indian. Those are the real winners. People who do hair, I love them. People, the hairdresser sees me and she looks at my hair. She's like, oh, Ami, you must be Indian. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, that is so sweet. The waxing lady, <laughs> the waxing lady, she just rips it off. You know, you know what she rips off and she puts it right on my face and she's like, Ami, you must be Indian. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't need that kind of negativity in my life. So I have never been hairier. I mean, I happier. I have never been happier since the Bush administration. <sighs> <laughs> People are always so excited though. Like if they actually have a conversation with me and they find out they're like, oh my gosh, like you ever feel that where somebody who's your ethnicity is just so happy. And there's like, there's another one of us. Woo one for every 100 to yep. 50,000. Yep. <laughs> it's like represent, not white. <laughs> <laughs> But I did grow up in Hawaii. It's so diverse in Hawaii. And Indian, it's so hard to find Indian people. But in Hawaii, it, I had this classmate who asked me, he was like, I mean, um, do, they, do they worship you in your country? 
because they worship cows, right? Don't they worship you? Oh, fuck. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and I was so offended because I've never been to India. You know, like, I don't know. We'll find out. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> I've been asked if I taste like curry and you know I was wondering what they were referencing like my armpits my knees my toes south of the Himalayas you know <laughs> so, do I taste like curry I don't know I looked myself up on Yelp and I've got a 4.5 star review yes thank you very much I don't I'm not gonna tell you how many reviewers have reviewed me but I got a lot of comments oh yeah <laughs> a lot of people want to appropriate your culture they're like oh okay you're something else i want to be something else and so i've had someone ask me for a sari she was like i want to go to a bollywood party i was like can i borrow she asked me can i borrow a sari from you and i was like i have this rule if you don't speak hindi you cannot wear the bindi not possible <laughs> I'm Ami Om. Thank you so much. Oh my God. Over. <laughs> oh shit. <clears throat> I got a little bit of the hookah. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's funny. I love when Omi does that joke. She's like, I'm biracial, I'm bisexual. And I'm just like, man, you're fucking with white people right now. You're creating some fantasies. <laughs> There's some guy out there. Like, I got to find an Omi poster. And I got like four things on my chart right now. No, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> and then I love it. She said not non bread or fry bread. You know, I'm tired of Native Americans calling those things tacos. They're not tacos. <laughs> if we're going to call indigenous Indian tacos tacos, we're going to start calling Jiro's tacos too. Because it's the same fucking thing. <laughs> I'm tired of Native Americans <laughs> saying they make a taco. Fry bread is not a fucking tortilla. Sorry. <laughs> and this whole time, Janelle's like, fuck, he does have Indian friends. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, he knows about the taco and the fry bread. Yeah, he's not a culture reappropriating me at all. No, I'm not. Fuck you. Standing up for myself now that we're recording it. Should have recorded your ass earlier. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I have fun here. I, that's the best part. I get the mic back. I talk shit. Black side comes out. Like, hell yeah. Hell, you want to fuck it? I got you. <laughs> this next guy, though, uh, whew, he looks like if AC Slater needed testosterone to get AC Slater, right? Like, if there's the guy before Captain America becomes Captain America, he's the guy before AC, like, he's middle school AC Slater, is what I'm saying. It's the haircut. I'm just fucking with you, buddy. <laughs> oh, this guy. He looks like my little brother I'd pick on, but defend from everybody. You know what I mean? Like, I'm the only one who bullies you. Just me. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's a real bully. You're, I'm only bullying you. Not everybody. I'm not a bully. I love. That's love. <laughs> that's what I told my little brothers, at least. No, I'm just fucking with you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Out of Seattle, Washington. I mean, we have to fucking line up Washington. Now you're getting it figured out. We don't, we mix out here. We're not segregated. Washington really hasn't been segregated at all. So if you notice all the comics that come out, they're beige. Yeah, this is beige. <laughs> we're not red or blue. We're beige out here. That's what it is. Our next beige comedian, <laughs> all the way out of Seattle, <laughs> mixed black and white. He's got no native, though, from what we heard. His parents didn't lie to him about the Indian, right? <laughs> <laughs> Give it up for Haynes. Steven! <laughs> What's up, everybody? Um, you know what, Dante? I got to be real with you. I think my dad did say his grandma was some part Cherokee or Seminole or some shit. So we got to go. I got to take a swab <laughs> test sometime soon. Um, <laughs> like everyone else in this show, you know, we probably I've talked with somebody who said I looked ethnically ambiguous, you know, and for me, it happened just the other day. And this lady came up to me and she's like, whoa, you look like pretty ethnically ambiguous. And for standing in line at a coffee shop, I thought that was bold small talk for this bitch to try and pull <laughs> off. And, and it's like, 
the weird thing was she wasn't ambiguous whatsoever you know what i mean like you could see it on her face like if this girl was a spice girl she would be pumpkin spice you know that is really, <laughs> you could see it on her cup too it said in sharpie it said courtney on it i was like i know who you are i've had this conversation before um <laughs> but i just want to level the playing field so you all know you know um i am i'm half black i'm half black um and like when i take a second to think about it you know i just want to say it's tough when you're black like across the board it's especially challenging when nobody believes that shit you know what i mean i don't know how to convince <laughs> them, let, me, let me say that thing. I that. That's a good fucking line. I'm sorry. I gotta interrupt. It's I crazy. feel you. I hate that shit. You're not fucking black. What do you mean I'm not fucking black? Fuck you. <laughs> oh, God, dude. It's, it's, I feel like everyone on the show probably, um, as a biracial person, like I've never felt like the norm in a room. You know what I mean? I'm always the minority, no matter what room I'm in. Like, I am the whitest guy at the barbershop and the blackest brother at the pumpkin patch. You know what I mean? It goes both ways. <laughs> <laughs> so the only place I really truly feel like I ever fit in is on a college brochure. That's the only time where I'm like, this is really my spot. You know, I live right at home, right at home in a cardigan, playing hacky sack with my blue haired lesbian friend on the quad. <laughs> like it's it's perfect there. It's, it's crazy. I can't blend in like anywhere like I can't blend in a group of white people I can't blend in in a group of black people the only place I blend in is a group of Mexicans you know I guess it's oddly enough like if Mexicans are butter I'm margarine you know what I mean (laughs) (laughs) same look slightly different flavor that's that's what I'm doing (laughs) like if I had a commercial it would say oh my god I can't believe it's not Carlos and then I just have to explain myself (laughs) <laughs> deal with that outcome. You said I can't believe it. <laughs> it's bad, dude. It's oh my god. I, group, I just know that I that's the only place I can blend in, you know? As long as no one asks me for directions or what my birthday is, like I can my cover is safe. Uh, but it's equally dangerous for me because I know that if I'm ever in a group of Hispanic people and the boys from immigration show up there is not going to be enough time for me to explain myself in this whole situation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm getting lumped into the crowd. There's no, there's no calling shit out. Like, sir, like, the, the officer's going to be like, all right, feller, looks like you're going to Guatemala. And I'll be like, excuse me, officer, um, I have never stepped foot in Guatemala. I don't know where it is on the map. Guatemala. <laughs> I don't know what they eat there. I don't know what it's like. I'd be, like, I'd be begging with the guy. I'd be like, please, sir, I, I'm not Latino. I, I'm half black. And that might give him pause for just like one second. But then everyone else I was with would start like chewing me out and trying to save themselves at my expense. You know what I mean? Like one guy would chime in. <laughs> one guy would chime in and be like, por favor, por favor, senor. Senor, um, I'm not Latino either. No. He'd be like, I'm half black too, I say. <laughs> you can take me home if you want but i live in oakland so i don't know you gotta give me a plane flight man (laughs) (laughs) so i get i get my black from my dad as i think most mixed people probably do um and my dad (laughs) 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 and my dad and i have like a weird relationship uh because he he had me when he was 60 which is like Wow. really old right like we can all agree that's too old for a new father uh, but he wasn't listening and people when they meet us on the street they'll ask us they'll be like oh my god is this your grandfather and i'll have to correct them i'll be like no <laughs> this old coot just won't stop fucking i don't know i don't know what to tell him <laughs> oh and my dad my dad has like his racist opinions you know like any good dad does um, <laughs> and and he should because this man was born in the 30s you know what i mean like 
if he should be somewhat racist, it would be concerning if he were any other way. Like, if I ever heard my dad correctly use the term Latin X, I would think he was having a stroke. I would call <laughs> 911 immediately to rush him because I think he's having an aneurysm as we speak. <laughs> Eddie's cool. Like, he's being with my dad has uh, convinced me that in the privacy of your own home, you should be allowed to be a little bit racist. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> as long as you keep it in your home, it's all all good. Like. <laughs> like just like you know the um like old-fashioned like homemade racism you know like just like grandma used to make that's what you're that's all <laughs> safe in the all safe in the house <laughs> like okay like take my family for example okay like my dad's family is all black and my mom's family is all white so when i was born my grandparents were all upset nobody was happy with how this thing turned out like Every year at Thanksgiving is an epic showdown of the aunties versus the ants. It's just like, it's like NFL set or Thursday, but on, but on a whole nother level. <laughs> I like to call it the light meat, dark meat uh, face off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but oh. my dad, my dad, so he had to be in his 60s um, and he's in his 80s now. And so he's kind of like, he's getting close. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> and like to be completely honest with you guys like i i'm not ready for my dad to die yet because his house is a mess and i don't have time to go through that shit and clean it up just now like i i need him to at least get a maid service for two weeks and then we can talk about you know setting up a memorial service <laughs> but but it also, like, he's just kind of gotten, like, lazy in old age. Like, he, he hasn't even written his will yet. Oh, shit. Which is crazy, right? That's, like, should be illegal if you're over 80. Like, it's... <laughs> <laughs> and I had to, like, I checked him one time because I had to, I asked sincerely. And I was like, Dad, how have you never, you know, just completed and written out your will? And he gave me a real genuine answer. And he was, like, he took a moment. He was like, well, I guess I never really just took the time to, you know, sit and think about my death like that. And I was like, Dad, I love you, but I don't believe that shit for a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You were raised in Jim Crow, Louisiana. You lived in Klan territory and you were fucking white women. Like you should have been thinking about your death. <laughs> For at least a minute or two. You know what I mean? There should have been some will planning going on there. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. And like, like my dad lived through segregation, which is just wild for me to think of. Like, I don't even know how, I don't even know how I would have navigated segregation, you know, with this fucking face. Like, people, you ever hear, you ever hear someone say like, oh, I wish I was born in a different decade. No, that is the whitest <laughs> I've ever heard of. Every decade sucked for most people. Like, I don't need to be in any different time period. Like, okay, I'll leave you guys with this. Like, bear with me. Like, when my dad, if I'd been existing through segregation, like, interracial relationships would have been illegal, right? Which would have made my dad a hardened criminal and my ass walking evidence. Like, there's no <laughs> shot that he gets away with this. You know, like that court case is 30 seconds. It'll just be the lawyer being like, your honor, the state of Mississippi would like to present exhibit A against this man, his fucking butterscotch baby over here <laughs> that don't speak a lick of Mexican. Obviously he's guilty. <laughs> All right, that's gonna be my time. I'm Hayne Stevens, thank you guys. Thanks so oh much. My God. Everybody, he's even got a little racism in himself. They don't speak Mexican; it's Spanish. You dick. <laughs> I thought about it. I'll give him a tag. His dad's the poster guy for Viagra. Not only did his dick get hard, but it got somebody pregnant at sixty. Shit. <laughs> and I know why his white grandparents were mad. They're like, "Don't go get a old Negro. We already wore him out." 
Get us a new one that can work in the field. Shit, what are you doing? <laughs> Sorry. You can have those. I'll send them to you later, buddy. I think those will kill. Um, it's funny, though, because I feel like when shit's going bad, people always say anecdotal shit to cheer you up. Like, just because you have all your arms and legs doesn't mean life's going good. You guys know what I mean? Yep. And I remember when my mom died, everybody wanted to cheer me up. They're like, you should get a pendant or earrings or maybe even a necklace, right? Because you can get it made out of her ashes. They're <laughs> like, that way, you'll always have something on you that will remind you of her. <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> that's sweet. You mean like these cigarette burn scars? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, best part is there's a tobacco usage history with these. Because on my right hand, that's a Salem. For those who don't know, that's a full menthol cigarette. <laughs> and then later, my mom became a classy lady. So on the left hand, that's a Virginia Slim. <laughs> and Don, don't worry. If this joke's too dark for you, don't worry, Don. I got my revenge. Because when my mom died, I had the bitch cremated. Yeah, who's the ass right now, mom? <laughs> yeah, I think I got the better burn out of that one, shit. Oh, my God. Best part is, first time I told that joke, there's a guy in the front row, he laughed and cried. And then he rubbed the scar on his forehead. And he was like, I miss you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get Don going. I love her anyway. She's over the way. Jesus fucking Christ. I love her because Angelo, even Umi, she hasn't heard me in for a while. They're like, oh, God, he's going in tonight. I like it. <laughs> I should do this more often. I, I'm on stage. I'm like, nope, same 10 minutes of recorded fucking jokes on Zoom. <laughs> Fuck it. Let's wing it. This ain't a real show like Janelle said anyways. <laughs> Bastard. Anyways, this next comedian, she's like the only black girl in Ottawa from what I heard. I think she... <laughs> She won oh, Ottawa's shit. funniest comedian. She's funnier than shit. She's been pissing off a whole lot of white guys. She's my kind of people. Woo! <laughs> Tell them to go fuck off, right? Exactly. She's, she's Caribbean Canadian, which means she's got a big old butt, but she doesn't like to fight, right? <laughs> <laughs> she's got a bit of French accent. She's not Creole. She's Canadian. For all you black guys wanting to get in her DMs, she's not Creole. She's Canadian. That's where that French comes from. Okay? Anyway, <laughs> she's not from the Louis Louisiana. She's not one of her cousins. Don't be like, hey, Red. She's not going to know what the fuck that means. Okay? <laughs> Anyways, our next comedian closing out this show all the way from Ottawa, Canada. Give it up for Don Hey, everybody. Hey. Yeah, I'm, I'm Dawn, and uh, people who don't know me very well call me Black. And uh, if you were on a school, <laughs> if you were on a schoolyard in the 1980s, uh, people would call me Go Back to Africa. So, uh, you know, geography was not a thing. Uh, so, <laughs> so uh, I, I'm, uh, I, I'm I'm Caribbean Canadian. I'm from this little island in the Caribbean called Dominica. It's between Antigua and Martinique. And uh, what's really weird is that my friends all like to vacation in the Caribbean, right? Mm. Uh, not me, not me. In my family, we've got this tradition. It's called going to the Caribbean to die. Oh, yeah. Shit. My parents just call it retirement. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> they don't like it when I call it the other thing. Um, but, uh, you know, if I'm going to go on vacation, I am going to do it up. I'm going to go somewhere exotic, that really exotic, like New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> New Jersey. Because uh, I've always wanted to know what I'm not missing, you know? Good. Good. So, uh, you know, my family, uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and the before times, uh, my family is like a global village. You know, you've got, you know, a couple of white people, got a couple of obviously black people. Um, you know, I've, I've got an aunt who's Japanese and uh, another uh, cousin who is, you know, Dutch. But we're like a global village. And uh, some families have, you know, the, the uh, family trees. 
in my family, we have the family pumpkin vines, you know, these, <laughs> <laughs> all the vines go everywhere. Sometimes you get, you know, surprise sisters or brothers and surprise cousins. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I, I've always wanted to know, you know, like, you know, what I am, because I'm not mixed, I'm, I'm misidentified. My mom looks Portuguese or Italian, you know, depending on, you know, she's been in the sun. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm afraid to do those DNA tests because I don't know what they're going to do with the stuff I send in, right? Are they going to make clones? I don't know. But if I ever have any doubts about if I'm black, all I have to do is go to a bus stop in Ottawa, you know, first thing in the week, first thing Monday morning, put on a big smile and say, good morning. And then I'll be met with complete silence. And that is how I know I'm black. That's how <laughs> Ottawa does it up. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, the, the other thing I can do is I can I can look at what my son's hair does um, because when his hair grows out, like he wants to grow a fro, and I kind of laugh because his hair goes straight after it gets you know long enough for a haircut. Um, so you know it's fun. You never know with multiracial families what you're gonna get. Uh, my mom says <laughs> lots of chocolates and. Uh, <laughs> And everyone loves babies that come from multiracial families because uh, you don't never know. Are they going to get grandpa's, are they, are they going to get grandma's green eyes or great grandpa's folksy race, racism? You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. It's a lottery. But uh, <laughs> so my, my mom was like a, like a Caribbean Martha Stewart. She kept a spotless house and uh, she was an expert cook, like even with like four kids. Uh, but then there's me. <laughs> yeah, well, then there's me. My house is a Petri dish. I have uh, delivery on speed dial. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I'm only responsible, you know, for a kid and a couple of guppies and the bottle of amaretto I hide in my fem den. <laughs> <laughs> My, uh, my kid figured out that guilt is my superpower. He figured this out when he was really young. He said, mom, I want you to be fired. Stay home with me, oh. you know? Yeah, it oh. looked me right in the eyes to tell me that. Oh my I, God. Yeah, so I took a couple of breaths and I said to him, if I'm fired, how do I buy your video games? How do I, you know, how do I take care of that? And so he's thinking for a minute. You can see the wheels turning. And now I'm, you know, I work for Pokeballs. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but uh, the thing is, in my house, we, we, were, we, we were comfortable in bribing kids with video games because we're all nerds. Uh, uh, my people like to be called blurds. Have you heard that? Yeah. And, and sometimes, sometimes when you're a blurred, uh, people think that you're not black enough. Oh my you know? God. Yeah, like there was a test. Yeah, because if you if there was a test, we'd get A's because that's what nerds do. <laughs> so, uh, you know, blurs and, and um, people don't always know what blurs are, uh, but thanks to a movie that came out a few years ago, more people do. It oh, was a... Uh, yeah, it was a movie called Hidden Figures. It was all about the really smart blurs that did the fancy math that launched America's first space rocket. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> it was a small problem. Uh, they had to sit at the back of the rockets. It was, uh, it was a rough time, very rough time. <laughs> we don't like to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. So I can really relate to, uh, I can't believe it's not Carlos's uh, college brochure. Because <laughs> you're smart, but you can't be too smart or else there'll be questions. <laughs> and uh, speaking about questions, there were a lot of questions when I dated because when you're the only black person in a city like Ottawa, <laughs> at least in the 80s, um, you know, there's you're not going to be a big selection about who you date. So I dated a lot of uh, white guys. I met this one guy 
uh, in a place called Thunder Bay. And that's like Duluth to you guys. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, he had just met me and he says, hey, Don, want to get a room? And I said, my day, yeah, I said, what? You just met me. But then, you know, hours later, when we were waking up, he, he said, uh, you know, he was intimidated in like approaching me because apparently where he comes from, interracial dating means dating a brunette. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. <laughs> so it's exactly <laughs> like Duluth. I've been there. I've been there. <sighs> so, um, uh, like, you know, I, 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 I finally in university was when I, 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 you know, uh, met and married the very first black guy I dated. You know, the others I'd met at university, I not dated. <clears throat> so, <laughs> you know, hobbies, right? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, as a family, we all like to do blurred things together. And in the before times, uh, we used to go to do this little thing called Comic-Con. And, and uh, I was really excited the last time I went to Comic-Con because I squeezed my doughy 40 something self into my very first cosplay. I, I went as my favorite superhero at the time, Black Widow. So I'm walking <laughs> into the building, so proud and puffed up. And someone comes up to me and he says, you know, Black Widow, not really black, right? So I'm, look, I'm looking at what he's wearing. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm a nerve. And I'm like, I'm looking at what he's wearing. And uh, I said, you know, Batman isn't fat and pockmarked, right? <laughs> Do you have any Clearasil? Do you got any Clearasil in that utility belt, dork knight? <laughs> and then the asshole runs off crying to his mom. <laughs> so I'll leave you on this one. Um, we recently saw, you know, as a family, again, the Black Panther movie, and we loved it. New characters, fresh plot, you know, people we hadn't seen on screen before, before it came out. And, uh, you know, the, I, we loved it, but there was only one problem. They didn't tell us what they did in Wakanda with the assholes. Oh, so, <laughs> No, they didn't. So if I was writing Black Panther, my Wakanda would include Panther slaps. Oh. So, yeah, so it would work like this. It would work like this. Are you using skin whitener? Oh, Panther slap. Are you putting raisins in the potato salad? <laughs> Panther slap. Are you listening to Drake again? Well, fuck you. That's two panther slaps. <laughs> and so that's it for me. I'm Don Sanklin. Good night. <laughs> oh my God. Don Sanklin, everybody. <laughs> you know, I didn't find out I was black till I went through my divorce. Court let me know real quick. <laughs> no, nigga, you don't get your kids and you're going to pay for them too. Exactly. I found out real quick. I'm 60% yeah. white, sir. I'm sorry. It's not how this is supposed to work. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. I go by Suitman Productions. We do a show called Deaf Comedy Jam. Pretty sure a lot of you guys have heard of it. Um, I'm not talking about that Deaf Comedy Jam, though, Al Angelo. It's D-E-A-F. We translate <laughs> comedy for deaf audience. But the funny part was is I'm half deaf, and uh, the deaf community got mad I was doing the show. When I told them I was half deaf, they were like, that's not deaf enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, bitch, I'm mixed. I've been proving how black or white I am. I'm not proving how deaf I am, too. You know what I mean? <laughs> But here's the fucked up part. I found out I was Asperger's last year, and uh, my response was not the best. I was like, so you're saying I'm a retard. And everybody's like, oh, you can't say that word. And I was like, yeah, but y'all still call me a nigga, though, don't you? <laughs> That's how we end the show. I got <laughs> hey, Carlos knows what I'm talking about. Shit. Isn't that right, Carlos? I can't believe it's not Carlos. <laughs>
Give it up for the Caribbean girl, Michael Jackson, sang about her, Don Zaglin, out of Ottawa. <laughs> We've got the Hawaiian girl who's feather. She's dot, not feather. She's the one who said it. Give it up for Uli <laughs> out of Vancouver. Give it up for our Caribbean girl, Don Zaglin, out of Ottawa, Canada. <laughs> Give it up for the guy who's not a doctor and disappointed his Filipino parents, Angelo Lazarte. <laughs> Give it up for the black, white, Native American or my Puerto Rican brother, Joel Aquiles. <laughs> Pretty sure you can catch him at Home Depot. Him and his cousin grab two of them. They do paint, drywall, plumbing, all of it, right? <laughs> Last but not least, give it up for Haynes Stevens. Not gonna lie, he looks like he's on the uh, brochure for ITT Tech. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like a light skinned East Indian guy, even though there's no West Indians. Who me remember, there's no West West Indians. Just want to let you know that. And last but not least, Janelle's not here. She's MCTAC. Yeah, she, she was ready to kill me. She knew I was 60% white and laid into me before the show like I was. She let me know. Don missed it. I was like, did Don not tell you I'm okay? Shit. Ooh, her black side was out before the show. Let me tell you something. Just using anybody's old flag, motherfucker. All right, I'm a punk bitch. Last but not least, I've been your host with the most... Biggest fucking cuss words out of the whole show probably come from me. And by the way, if you don't know, this summer in August will either be the first or second weekend. We'll be doing the Summer Salem Arts Festival. Uh, we're partnering up with 98.3 KMWV out of the Oregon area. You can hear them all in the mid Willamette Valley area from like Portland all the way down to Salem. We're on there every Friday, 8 o'clock. And Sundays also, you can hear our comedy shows and our podcasts on them. But this summer, if you want to travel down to Salem, be part of the arts festival, even the comedians on here, let us know. Let me know. We'll get you on it. Uh, we're looking for spoken word. We're looking for painters. We're looking for jugglers. If you know a magician, no, Umi is a contortist, but we're going to stick with comedy for you, okay, Sunshine? <laughs> Not getting naked and doing your contortist. I know how you work. I'm like, well, I've seen you, okay? I'm not, I don't want no trouble. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a hippie friendly show goddamn we're gonna have kids there till 5 p.m but check us out uh soupman productions soupmancomedy.com thank you for everybody coming out this has been mixed misidentified have a great night everybody <laughs>